Okay, so I have a data table set up to show you how to do uh, a standard curve. If you look at the data, I have uh, the standard concentrations um, in the first column, column A. Uh, those are concentrations in milligrams per milliliter. Um, and then I have um, the OD or absorbance at 620 nanometers uh, for three different um, tests at each of those different concentrations. Um, so when you have multiple uh, points of data like that, uh, you wanna start by make, uh, taking an average. So if I just make a column here for average, uh, the formula for that is equals average, um, and then just select the cells that you wanna average. So it's those three cells. There's my average. I'll do that for all of these by um, dragging down on that. Uh, box in the lower right corner and then uh, I can just clean this up by formatting the cells and I'll give it three decimal places since I started with three sig figs over here um, and then the other thing you want to do when you have uh, average data is you always want to calculate um, a standard deviation or standard error of the mean uh, basically if you have an, an average and you just display the average you're getting rid of valuable information about how variable the data is. Um, is it very variable around the average or is it nice and tight good data around the average? Um, and standard deviation or standard error are two uh, methods for assessing that. Um, and so for standard deviation, uh, I'm gonna type the formula, it's equals st dev, uh, and then I believe uh, the new one is the, um, SP, stdevp, uh, this first one, you can see the old function stdev has got a little uh, exclamation point here telling us that it's no longer the preferred uh, formula, but if we do the um, stdevp here, uh, and then an open parenthesis, uh, and then we can grab our data points here that we want to get the standard deviation from, um, and there it is. And again, we can grab that cell grab this little box in the lower right corner, drag it down to apply it to all, that formula to all the cells. Um, and again, we'll format this cell and just give it uh, three sig figs like we did uh, for the average. So there's our standard deviations and the proper sig figs. And now for making the actual standard curve, we just grab uh, the standard concentrations uh, on a standard curve, those are gonna be on the x-axis and then we grab the average OD values at each of the standard concentrations. That's gonna be the y-axis. You go to insert, and we wanna do a scatter plot, uh, which is this little symbol here. Um, the scatter plot here without any lines, because um, we're gonna add our own trend line. Uh, you can clean this up a little bit if you want. Um, sometimes, you know, delete grid lines, uh, clean up the axes if you need to. Um, obviously, you want to add uh, labels to your axes if you're going to hand this in. So you want to have, uh, you know, absorbance at 620 nanometers or OD 620, um, and you want to have starch concentration in milligrams per milliliter down here. Uh, but to actually add the uh, or make the standard curve, what we want to do is add a trend line. So if I select the data points and then right click, I can add a trend line. There's the trend line. Whenever we display a trend line, we want to see the equation. Uh, that's a straight line equation y in y equals mx plus b form. So we have that equation there. And we also want to add the um, r squared value to the chart. There's my r squared value. Um, the r squared value tells us how well the trend line fits the data points that we have on there. Uh, generally, we like an R squared value of 0.95 or better. Um, that means basically we're 95% sure that this straight line function um, describes our data. Um, in this case, I've got a 0.99 R squared value, so that's very good. Um, in some situations, you might go down to like a 0.9 R squared, and that's fine. Um, it's always good to have that there. Um, if you have some kind of problem later when you're using this, the uh, standard curve to calculate a, an unknown concentration or something, you can say, well, our R squared value was only 0.88, so um, 
this equation may not be the best equation for describing the data, uh, but it's what we had and what we used. Um, you know. The other thing you want to do now is you need to add the standard deviation. And um, adding the standard deviation here, um, this is what presents people, I think, with problems most of the time. So on this version, this is the newest version of Excel um, 2016, you're going to go up here and click the chart elements, add chart elements button here in the right corner, and you're going to click error bars. Um, and if you go ahead and add the error bars, it's going to add error bars um, in both directions, the X and Y direction. Uh, you can go ahead and do that, just click error bars. Um, our standards are going to be on the X axis, obviously there's no error in these. We know what the concentrations are, so these error bars are kind of a moot point, so we're just going to delete those by hitting, grabbing them and hitting the delete key. And then when you're left with these error bars, you'll notice that the, the size of all these error bars is identical for each data point. The magnitude is the same. Um, I'm not sure what Excel is doing here, but it's not calculating the standard deviation or standard error properly. Um, so what we want to do is actually add custom error bars. So if you go back here and click on this little arrow that pops up next to the error bars, you can go to more options. And um, I had to actually click on the error bar options thing here. I don't know why it didn't come up right away, but you, what you want to do, it's got standard error now, but I don't know how it calculates that really. Um, what you really want to do is the custom error bar. So if you click custom and then click specify value, you can actually um, select the values that you calculated. So if you hit this button here, you can go and, and grab those values. Um, and you want to have both positive and negative error. Uh, so it goes both directions from the data point up and down. So we'll grab that one there and we'll hit OK. And those are the actual error bars for our data set. Um, and that's pretty much what you have to do. On the older versions of Excel, um, when you add the error bars, what you're going to do is select the data points. Um, and if you go up here, uh, once you've selected the data points, if you go up here to format, um, or design, there's usually a button um, that says uh, to add error bars. In fact, here it is. If you add a chart element here, um, you can add error bars. And if you do it this way, just click more error bar options and you can go ahead and add the custom bars um, right away. Um, and so that's pretty much a standard curve. Um, and so now uh, you have this equation y equals mx plus b, right, where y is your absorbance and X is the concentration of the standard here. And so if you measure the absorbance of an unknown sample, um, you can find uh, basically what the starch concentration is or, or what the, sorry, what the standard concentration is um, or, or what the concentration of the sample is based on its absorbance. So if its absorbance say was 0.4, um, you could go over here to 0.4 for absorbance, go across until you hit the trend line and say, well, the concentration is 0.8 milligrams per milliliter, right? Um, the other way to do it, the more exact way to do it, um, is to take that 0.4 absorbance that you got and actually plug it in as the Y value in this equation and then solve for X. Um, so that's basically how to make and use a standard curve. Um, great. I hope that helps. Um, things obviously will be a little bit different on the Mac, but I think um, in Excel, most of the stuff, most uh, of the buttons and everything should be in basically the same place. So good luck.